What are we? Thirteen? Yeah. It's kind of ironic. This is episode thirteen. <laughs> Is this really episode 13? Sure is. All right, oh, boys. Yeah. That was fast. Ready to lose half the followers that we got? Send it. 15 is no worse than 30. <laughs> Lucky number 13. Welcome, everybody, to the Lion's Den. Lucky number 13. Uh, again, my name's Eddie. And this is Daryl. I'm Brad. This is Alex. I uh, just want to thank uh, all of our... We have quite a few new followers, a lot of new people checking out the... Um, both actually the podcast and YouTube. Yep. I know you want to give uh, some thanks to yeah, somebody for that. Yeah, I want to say uh, thank you to uh, Tom Siminski and Anita Padilla for uh, for sharing that out there. We really appreciate the support and helping us get the word out. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Please uh, like, update, subscribe. Uh, so today's going to be a little unique topic that i um, been wanting to talk about forever. So we're 13 episodes in. Um just kind of an evaluation of who we are, what this is about, you know, why we wanted to do this. Um, I want to first give an apology to God, my creator, my maker. So yes, I could say that. Uh, Jesus Christ, my savior, my Lord. I could also say that. Um, since we started with YouTube, you could kind of see when people are tuning in and tuning out. So, you know, what I've definitely seen is as soon as we start talking about God, people don't want to hear it. Unfortunately. You know, they're they're tuning out right away. So over the midst of this, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of work to put this out every week. You know, we're all putting our hearts and souls into this. You know, this has been a lifelong thing for me. I know bringing you guys in, connecting with people, getting the message out. And, you know, I do sales for a living, so naturally I know what sells, what doesn't. And what I found out pretty quickly is God doesn't sell. So when you start talking about God, people tune aren't out. buying, they tune you out. So we've obviously talked about it, you know, kind of skirted around it, kind of interjected into it. Um, but we really hasn't, haven't gone too deep into it. And that was the whole point of this. You know, this, this whole thing was faith-based. Um, you know, again, that's our baseline. Mm -hmm. It's not the only thing we yep. want to talk about. It's not the only thing we want to go over. But, you know, that, that's our baseline. That's our foundation. Right. Um, so that ends today. So if we end up with our mothers and wives and few friends with it at the end of this, so be it. Yep. I can't in good conscience do it anymore. You know, I feel guilty about it and feel horrible. Um, it's not the representation of my God. It's been done too much for me. Jesus sacrificed too much to hide behind it because I'm worried about hurting somebody's feelings or, God forbid, we lose a follower or whatever. So it's going to get real, real today. Um, so today's subject really is why is... Speaking about faith, religion, God, why has that become so taboo? Um, you know, I was kind of laughing earlier about a celebrity that came out and let everybody know he didn't really date somebody. This is on real news. National. <laughs> so, yep. I mean, I miss uh, Apple this, News. But... Actually, it was three times. So we can talk about that. Uh, the Johnny Depp thing. Big what news. was her name? Uh, Amber Heard. Mm -hmm. Amber Heard yeah. was on a newspaper every single day. Everybody and her mother was watching it, 50 different articles. We could talk about that. Mm -hmm. It's none of our business. Everybody really seemed to be super concerned about that. Meanwhile, we have real shit going on in our world, real shit going on in our country. And God forbid you talk about God. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier. You know, he's back in the news now because I think... Uh, Probably because Jurassic Park released, and I think he's got another new... Uh, yeah, Jurassic Park and something else he got to... What's his name? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, yeah. Chris Pratt. So Chris Pratt came, kind of self-made guy, 
was in, from what I understand, was living in a tent in Hawaii, kind of doing, being a waiter, got discovered somewhere, you know, made a career for himself, was extremely well liked. His movies were obviously extremely successful. Got an award for something and gave thanks to God and told the whole crowd, God loves you, God's there for you, um, and thank you, and became a social pariah over it. There was some tie-in with that church that was, you know, unwelcoming to gays or something. The other person, Juno, came out against them. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Attending that church, and the beanie doesn't attend the church anyways. It's some other one. So it was big to do. To ruin this guy's image. Ruin this guy's image, you know, and, and now I've recently seen a couple of uh, interviews where he's talking about it. And it really hurt his feelings. Yeah, like off it an was acceptance like speech. <laughs> off the, I don't know, is it three Chris's, four Chris's, whatever. Right. You know, who do you want to get rid of? And it was him. And it was because he talked about God. Yeah. Wow. And seems like a great guy. I haven't heard anything said bad about him. Everybody that works with him kind of came out in his defense. And, and it's like, why are we there in this world? You know, why are we there as a country where you mention God and you become a social pariah? Mm-hmm. And we did kind of talk about this a little bit earlier, us four in a funny position because, you know, the religious right, we're coming at you and we're coming at you hard. And those are probably the people that want to listen to this. Right. And the outside left, probably ideology might have some things similar in common. Last thing I want to hear about is God. So... You know, our voice is kind of in that middle, and that middle's real quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have the left that's super loud, you have far right super loud, and that middle that's quiet. You know, my concern is, and the whole point of starting this is where is that coming from as far as that? Why is it so taboo to have a sincere conversation about God? And when it first kind of came up, even somebody said, man, I feel like you were trying to convert me. I'm not trying to convert anybody. We actually said that at the beginning. For sure. It's not yeah. the point. Yeah. So I believe with all my heart and soul, you're going to find God one way or the other. Be it today, two minutes before you die, whatever, you're going to find your maker. It's not my position in any way, shape, or form to you know, have you convert to anything. I myself have checked out several different philosophies, several different religions. We talked about quite a few of them here. Yeah. The whole point of this is being open to that road, being open to finding that faith. I mean, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. So what do you kind of think about all that, Daryl? So with the, like, separation of, like, talking about faith and God and uh, open form or an open sentence. The way I've noticed that that's like started is with the separation of um, uh, faith and, uh, and all other things. So if you look at any kind of uh, industry, uh, faith and religion is separate. So like we both wrote a book. Mm-hmm. You have strictly uh, faith-based publishers. So if you submit to a traditional book house or to a literary agent, once they reach your material, and if it's faith-based, they start targeting those houses mm-hmm. to publish your book because it's a consensus that the general public doesn't want to read that or doesn't want to hear it or doesn't want to discuss it. And that goes the same thing with movies. Um, any product that you, that you look at, once you start getting that line of faith, or God, or anything that's religion, whatever you want, whichever one out of those you want to put it at, you start to notice that man decided at some point that it needs its own separate category, you know, because maybe that's because I, I don't want to offend somebody that's not of that faith, mm-hmm. or I don't know. You have people who say that's because they want to target it best so that it can reach the you know people who are interested in. Right. But I don't think it should be limited like that. And um, when, I, when you were talking, that's what I was thinking about. I was like, man, everything that you look at with faith, because I watch a lot of movies, and then you have, like, like it's a faith, uh, religious, faith-based movie channel. I can't think of it right now. Um, but it's just like HBO, but it's mm-hmm. all religious movies and everything like that. And um, But why couldn't they be on 
Netflix. Right. You know, why do they have to be on their own? Right. You know, um, why does there have to be any separation? Yeah. That movie that I, that I told you about that like pissed me off a couple months ago in the winter. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And it yeah. was a book. It was, this was apparently a super popular book. Yeah. The Western. I, yeah. I yeah, read yeah. a lot of books and I watch a lot of movies and I had never heard of it and was coming to theaters. I was like, what is this? Why is this such a big to do to certain people? So after I watched the movie, which I did not enjoy, mm-hmm. but I started like, well, maybe I'll enjoy the book. And I looked up the book. It had a huge following, but you can only find out about the book or get the book from uh, these uh, Christian bookstores, hmm. christianbookstore.com. And then when you look on there, it sold millions of copies. Wow. And here I am, a person that is on Audible, who goes to Barnes & Noble, goes to the library, reads books, listens to books. And I knew absolutely nothing about it. So that separation uh, is what made, uh, to me, in all those aspects, made it very, very taboo in the mainstream of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for me, you know, I, I kind of said it earlier when we were talking that, you know, with this podcast, it was, it was about bringing faith to light for people um, the way I understand faith and the way it's helped me in my life. Mm-hmm. And like we said, there's all different paths of religion that you could take and follow and that can greatly benefit you. Um, and that's what this is about is getting the word out there. And it's interesting that you bring up that separation of, you know, between the, the books or businesses or, mm-hmm. you know, and there were a lot of people when we started doing this that kind of came forward and were like, you know, I don't really know a lot about religion. So if you take these people that, that maybe don't really know much about it, but only hear what, like you said, Apple News and what, you know, what is what is kind of forced upon our world, um, it's not really a, a fair fight, to say the least. You know, I feel like it's people that don't know, it's, it's kind of putting them further back because there are no outlets to t- talk about this or you have to dig really deep. Like you just said, you have mm-hmm. to dig deep or there's these, these secondary outlets. So that was the point of this podcast was to, to shed some light, to, you know, help educate people so people could make, you know, a, a justified decision in, in their belief system and better their lives and help them get through the struggles of life and what they were getting through. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't be more right. I mean, it's a hundred percent on point. Um, you know, the big concern was any conversation about faith, about God, how was that being represented? Right. Two weeks ago, Texas, there was a pastor that I read about that in his sermon, anyone who's homosexual should be shot in the back of the head. So this isn't a lay person. This isn't two people talking in a church. This is the pastor Mm -hmm. saying that nonsense. So my concern is somebody who hasn't really found that direction, hasn't really found a faith, is curious about it, wanting to find something, is in that search, and that comes across, you know, is that person like, oh my God, I really want to dig deeper into this. This sounds like something that I'm interested. Um, More concerning is that pastor's an idiot. You're an ass, whoever the hell you are. Without question. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Not only is that blasphemy, it's heresy. Nothing like that ever came out of Jesus's. So, you know, what is so important for somebody who isn't of faith to understand is we as Christians follow the word of Christ, hence Christianity. So that's New Testament. Now, for sure, Old Testament is is part of all of our Bibles, but... You know, we became Christians, Old Testament, Judaism, New Testament, along with Old Testament is Christianity. So when you've read the New Testament, I don't even know how many dozens of times. Never heard anywhere in there Jesus killing or advocating killing anybody Hmm. for any reason, let alone for this or that. So I don't know where the hell you're getting that garbage from. It's not what it's about. It has never been what it's about. And my biggest concern is I'm seeing it. And that's why I want to talk about it today. 
the abortion things coming out right now, the Roe versus Wade stuff is coming out right now. I've had an experience with that. And we'll talk about it a little later on. Um, and all of this representation about faith just seems so hateful. And there is absolutely nothing hateful about God. And there is definitely nothing hateful about Jesus. So I don't even know where that comes from. Mm -hmm. I do. You know, I, I, I it's um, just kind of lost, you know, and I, and I get it. I get ticked talking about those people so I could get why they get sick, you know, on the other mm -hmm. side. But I mean, that's what we're here to do is have those conversations. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I think the difference there is the humanity part of it. I mean, where that hate, the anger, the violence comes from is human interpretation. I mean, the flat out fact, especially with this podcast is all four of us. The whole point of this is conversations of things that we've gone through life, the struggles that we had through them and how we used God and faith, because that's a huge part of all of our lives to navigate that. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean if you're listening, you have to believe in God. What it does mean is you have to have the ability to be open to ideas and listening to them. And guess what? You don't have to agree with them. Mm -hmm. But if you're open to listening to them and seeing how it affected us, there could be something in there that's good for you. If you don't have the ability to do that, this isn't the podcast for you. No, because absolutely. what we're here to do is what you said. Talk about what I went through, what you went through, Daryl, Brad, and what we did to navigate through it. And for all of us, the reason we're sitting at this table is because God was that fallback. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All Definitely. our triumphs, our successes, even newsflash, the failures that we've gone through were because we're supposed to go through them to become a better person on the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's all because of God. So if that's not something you're okay with, this just might not be the place to find whatever it is you're looking for. Not necessarily if you don't believe in God, just if you're not open to those ideas. And I think with people in their search for power, religion gets bent to manipulate the ways that is good for them. No oh, doubt about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And I think... For ages. Yeah, and I think that's where the interjection comes in. I think that's where the issue in lies is as people, we're a selfish breed. And, you know, I've said before that we're put here on this earth to find true happiness, but if it's true happiness based off the Bible, based off of our beginning, like you said, that, that never comes from a place of greed, selfishness, or hate. So when that's interjected, you know, that's where most people, I feel like, don't have the ability to look inward and realize well, it's that's me creating that, and most people don't have a desire to because why would they ruin what's working for them, even if that means ruining somebody's life? Mm -hmm. I mean, any situation, if you can't sit across a table with somebody just because you have a difference of opinions, how can you actually understand that? You know, Daryl, you and I, we met however many years ago when you got hired on. Mm -hmm. There's probably things you and I don't agree on. I would, yeah, I, with anybody. I believe, I would. I'll still sit at the table with you, have a beer with you, smoke a cigar. We're sharing a round of golf tomorrow. Yep. It, it, I don't have to agree with everything with somebody in order to be getting along with that person. No, and it's I, disingenuous. Yeah, and I mean, this Roe versus Wade stuff, it's huge. It's everywhere, and it's there's so many differences of opinions. You know, we said it, and it's it's pretty blunt, but just mind your own damn business. Yeah. You know, if you don't have anything positive to contribute to the situation, walk on. I mean, it's simple. Mm -hmm. um, or take the path of more resistance, do the things that we talk about, the things that we strive for, we don't always achieve, and be a lion among sheep. Stand up, be the person that is getting pointed at, having people make comments towards because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, just because other people don't approve of it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And I think that's the point of what we want to talk about today is from this point forward, there'll be no beating around the bush. It'll be straight up. This is how we see it. This is what we think is messed up with it, and you agree with it or you don't, you know, and hopefully we can get some good out of that. And the whole point is having that discussion. So everyone at this table and everyone who's ever, I, I mean, for a split second, when Jesus is on the cross, Father, why have you forsaken me? So, you know, that, that's a second of question. You know, however long that lasted, and we've all felt that. We felt that throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. Is there a God? What the hell is he doing? Why am I going through this? Why are babies dying? Why is there cancer? Why is there hurricanes? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Why did this person I love die? 
so on and so forth. So the questions are completely human, completely rational. It's completely understandable that people feel that way. We've all felt that way. What I have a hard time with is why is it so hard to have a discussion about it where it's not like, oh, you're talking about God, yuck. And that's really what I wanted to address today because I know why that's the case. I know on both sides. A lot of it comes from self-righteous. No doubt. So when we think we're doing the right thing, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody, when we think we're doing the right thing, that how far can you go because it's the right thing to do, that line can get real blurry real quick. And yes, what I'm doing is wrong, but I'm doing it for the right reason or I'm sacrificing the one to save the thousands or whatever the case may be. You know, those lines can get real blurry real quick. And that's really, in my opinion, why we're at this stage of faith, religion, because so many people have seen that and the lines have become so distorted that when someone who doesn't know what's going on is is watching and that's the feedback they're getting so right now roe versus wade i have an interest in in christianity i'm watching tv right now i'm seeing pictures of body parts on signs getting thrown in people's faces i'm watching the other side do the exact same thing to the other side and depending on where i land philosophically is where I'm gonna land faith-wise. Because, okay, I agree with this, you know, abortion is wrong, I'm gonna fall on that side. Hey, I agree with, you should have a right to choice. I'm gonna fall on that side. And meanwhile, faith is getting kind of dropped in between there. And the reality of faith is, I understand the passion behind holding the signs. Completely understand. What concerns me is you're taking it to a level that our father isn't okay with. No. So I don't know what you really think you're going to gain by shoving a picture of, you know, baby body parts in somebody and saying abortion is wrong. You're not going to change anybody's mind by doing that. Well, that's not being a Christian. That's not being a Christian. I mean, Christianity is about empathy, compassion love, understanding. Mm -hmm. It's not about anger. It's not about proving people wrong. It's not about chastising. I mean, again, we talked about it pretty recently. I think it was the last episode on the cross. Forgive them, Father, I know not what they do. As mm -hmm. he was being chastised. Mm -hmm. So that was the message to us that it's never okay. No. So Jesus could have said, you know what? Screw all of you. I'm getting down off this. Mm -hmm. Live in sin. You know, I, I wanted to make this show of love for you, but you know what? You're not worth it. I don't need this shit. Right. I'm going back to dad. Right. Right. Could easily yeah, say Grab that. some suntan lotion. It's going to be right. warm where you're all going. <laughs> <laughs> Could have yeah. gone that way. You're going to have a rough couple of centuries. You didn't even think like that. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But instead, you know, he said, forgive them. They know not what they do. That was the message to us of even when everything seemingly makes it feel like, okay, this is the time where you don't have to take this crap, where you can, you know, go back at people, you can strike out. You can't because the precedent has been set. Now, do I do that all the time? Absolutely not. I'm as guilty of it as anybody else of lashing back out. This conversation, this subject ticks me off more than anything in my life because it's so hypocritical. Mm -hmm. And it's a bastard, bastardization of my father, of my God. You're misrepresenting my father, which makes me sick to my stomach. I can't accept it. So do I want to lash out, scream, yell, punch people in the face? Absolutely. I dream about it. I don't do it because I want to consider myself a Christian. My follower is Christ. I know that that's not the right thing to do. I know you're not going to accomplish anything by doing that. So my, my mistakes, I can accept as my own. I don't blame it on God. I don't blame it on Jesus. Well, it was okay because it was here or there. Or it, this was written, you know, whenever. And so, it, you know, I have every right to do that. It's, you're kidding yourself. 
You know, that's not the reality of what the message is. Um, and for me, you know, again, when people are seeing that over and over and over again, and it's really come to a hilt, especially the last five, six, eight, eh, seven, eight years, mm -hmm. you know, where it's just like frothing right. over, yeah. where, you know, there's just so much aggressiveness with that and so much misinterpretation that I get why people are turning this podcast off. You know, I don't want to hear about God. I see what those people that believe in God, mm -hmm. what they do and where mm -hmm. they're coming from. I don't want no part of it. I don't know what you guys think about that. I want to go back to uh, righteousness where you were talking. I, I mean, I'm like a sometimes I'm a word Nazi in my own usage. And um so when we're talking about righteousness, I revisited the definition of righteousness. And it is what the same de definition that I thought it was. And um, it's pretty much just a, uh, a, a moral construct to determine whether what you're doing is, is, is right, is mm -hmm. justifiable, ethical. morally ethical. And I believe from my experiences, and not just local, this is across the world, I've had experiences with uh, righteousness being a manipulation tool. Mm -hmm. Because if you can get somebody to do something that is questionable and you can dress it up uh, to be uh, morally um, correct in uh, um, whatever cause, then they're more, more likely to do it. So like you had like righteous beheadings, righteous suicide bombers in uh, the Middle East where I spent time at. And they used that so that you could either the person doing it or the family that supported it could feel like they were doing it because it supported the, the cause, the true mm -hmm. cause. And uh, we had this thing talking about when you go against a true believer, because I was a professional soldier. So here in the, in the United States, you don't have like true believer soldiers. You just have kids who signed up to go do whatever they go do. They needed college money. They need to get out of that situation. There's very little people who, uh, excuse me, there's very little people who like, signed up because they really really believed in whatever the mission is at the time um but when you go over the type of people that you are engaging are true believers because a lot of those uh people were defending their homes their countries and um their lands and areas and they'd use faith to justify it and mm -hmm. make it righteous you know how do you get somebody to donate somebody in their family to wear a suicide vest. You make them feel that it's righteous and then you use two types of comp uh, compensation. You use a morally a moral compensation and then you use some kind of financial compensation. So whenever I see somebody say something and they base it out of righteousness, I automatically think that there might be some haze to whatever it is they're supporting, whatever they're doing. Because the people holding those signs up and supporting whatever it is they support, if they're going against Roe versus Wade, if they're for Roe versus Wade, they hold those signs up. They feel righteous in what they're doing. They're using whatever they wrote on there because don't nobody write pleasant messages on signs. Mm -hmm. We just talked about that. Mm -hmm. It's like an, it's a it's a cheap way to be aggressive. It's, it's passive aggressive. It's like sending a text. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Keep you know, warrior, but they sit there posting. and they write and they read it and they're like, yeah, you know, that's that's, yeah. that's going to affect people. Right. Stuff that they would never say to somebody, you know, right. face to face. And then they use that righteousness, the the feeling of being righteous because other people are right there creating signs, and they use that group. So now they feel they feel strong in their masses, and they go out and they do that. Yeah, we're saving babies. Yeah, we're saving unborn life. Yeah. Uh, before we started recording, I talked about when I went to get sushi, mm -hmm. and I passed a turn, and the sushi place I used to go to in North Carolina. If anybody's been to Fort Bragg on Bragg Boulevard, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Actually, it's not on Bragg Boulevard anymore, but you'll know what I'm talking about. It's right off of Skyboat Road. At least it used to be. But it was a Planned Parenthood there, and then just past the Planned Parenthood was a Japanese restaurant. And I was going to get sushi at the Japanese restaurant and missed my turn. And I turned around and turned into the Planned Parenthood uh, parking lot. I tried to turn to the Planned Parenthood parking lot and was bombarded by uh, families of, uh, of sign-wielding uh, people telling me how we were about to commit an atrocity because I was making a U-turn. So it was like an experience that I was unexpected. And this was in like, you know, 12 o'clock on a Tuesday or Wednesday, this, you know. And I'm like, first, my first thought is like, damn, do these people have jobs? <laughs> like, <No>. what? <laughs> and then you read their signs, and they move out of the way, and then I turn around. And the whole time I ate my lunch, I was like, that was ridiculous, because I did have a female coworker in the car with me and then uh, two other guys. But I'm like, so they looked at the dynamic of the car. 
mm-hmm. a, a young lady in the front seat. I'm driving two other guys, funny, ignoring the fact that we're in uniform. Right. And they thought that we were about to go and have a abortion performed, I guess, at, at noon on Tuesday. And that their sign was going to stop that. Right. You know, um, if they really cared, or if they really wanted to be what righteous is, I think they would have had some options available. You know, before you do this, maybe you should look into this. Have you, you know, looked into this? Instead of coming with that easy, passive aggressive, and ignorant sign wielding, finger pointing, I'm right, you're wrong mentality. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my famous lines that I say to people is, I wasn't always a plumber. You know, usually after doing some sketchy shit, sometimes you have to do as a plumber. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like Jesus would have hung out with us. He would have pulled up at this table, and we've all at this table done some sketchy shit Mm -hmm. um you know it's not jesus didn't judge you know he hung out with people like us it's not for us to judge you know it's not for the people waving the goofy ass signs to judge um it's just not that's you know our creator he can judge us at the end Mm -hmm. it's not for us it's not for us to judge others and be extremely ignorant in doing so. so. I think my favorite line, and this is definitely going to get some people going, is um, we're all created equally. So don't care how much money you make. Don't believe you should believe in Trump. Don't care if you believe in Trump. Don't care if you believe in Biden. Don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. You used to say it all the time. Love this line. You step outside, and this is violent, but it gets the point across. I stab you. I hand you a knife, and you stab me. You pull the knife out of both of us. Guess what? There's red blood coming out of both of us. Mm -hmm. Point is, is we're all the same person. We're all created equally. None of us have any right to judge anything. I've done terrible things to other human beings because I felt like I had a point to prove. Mm -hmm. Was it right? No. Am I proud of it? No. I did it. Right. Doesn't mean I'm a bad person. We move on. I don't think people understand the weight that is carried when you bestow so much judgment on people, what it does to them. And you want to say, well, you should have made better choices. Give me two hours and a book about your life, and I'll find something the public ain't too proud to hear about. They don't even take that long. You know, I mean, before you start pointing, look inward. People make decisions that aren't good ones every single day. You do. You do. You do. I damn sure do. Mm -hmm. And I know better. And I still do it. You know why? Because I'm human. Mm -hmm. I sure as shit don't want to be judged on it. And I don't think people realize that it's, like I said, not not up to us to do so. You know, I mean, a Christian, the right thing to do is show support. You don't have to support what they're doing. Be there for the person. And if you can't do that, that doesn't make you a bad person either. Mm -hmm. Just don't be there. Whether it be at a Planned Parenthood, Mm -hmm. you don't have to agree with it. Mm -hmm. Stay home or take your ass to work. You don't need to be outside having decisions, pointing judgment towards people that are already going through whatever the hell it is they're going through, Mm -hmm. which shame on you for assuming it's just a way out. You have no idea. So instead of putting yourself in a position to find righteousness, mind your own damn business. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to be what a Christian is supposed to be and you want to be there, be there in a helpful way. Not saying you have to go in there and support it and say, you got this, if that's the instance we're talking about, but show your support, show a different way, offer help, offer guidance, offer whatever it is you have to. And then at the end of the day, whatever person, whatever decision that person makes is the decision that they make. Right. You know, you made the opportunity mm-hmm. and the effort to help in any way, shape or form in whatever situation it would may be, not just Planned Parenthood, anything. And if it doesn't set home or maybe it's not the right decision for them, you did the Christian thing. And that is showing up and giving support, offering help, offering guidance in a non-bias with no agenda for yourself in any way, shape, or form. If you walk up to open the door for an elderly lady when you're walking into a grocery store and she turns around and says, fuck you, are you going to punch her in the face? No. (laughs) You know, you offer to open the door. Why would she do that? I don't know. Maybe she's having a bad day or maybe she's this Karen I hear all about on the internet. (laughs) Either way, all I know is, is I opened the door. I did the right thing. She told me to go fuck myself. So I did. 
<laughs> I didn't say anything back. You know, mm -hmm. the whole point is just be a good person. Try to be. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work and you can't help, move on. You did what you were supposed to do. You know, you don't have to be a God complex. We have one of those. Really good one. Mm -hmm. I, time and time again, for me, I know unequivocally there's a God. I know I, I'm not going to get too far into it because I'll talk about it on another podcast. A guy who's like my older brother. And you know me. My grandfather was like everything. He passed away. This is a guy I asked to stand in his place to walk my grandmother down the aisle. Ten weeks ago, this guy was hitting a motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm told he had less than a 3% chance. His poor wife, after making a four-hour drive, was told, start making arrangements. That's how bad it was. They found teeth in his lungs. He's walking. He walked over 100 feet on Monday. So explain to me, who did that? That's God. Prove to me otherwise. You're not mm -hmm. going to. Unequivocally, doctors, medical professionals that have been doing this 30 years, if he comes out of this, he's never going to live the same. Now, there's a really good chance that maybe he walks with a limp and he was in a coma. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is, is stop pretending like you know what you're talking about. None of us do. Mm -hmm. We're just along for the ride, mm -hmm. you know, and during that ride, you have two choices. You could be a terrible human being and find your maker, find your God, find the person that you believe in two seconds before you leave this world and take an entire lifetime and try to make it right. Or you start doing it now. Mm hmm. If you weren't doing it yesterday, that's okay. Yesterday's gone, and it's never coming back. Start today. Try it. It's absolutely freeing. No, I mean, I think that's, um, you know, 100%, you know, a, a, again, it should be a topic that could should be able to be discussed, conversed about, not anybody freaking out, not, you know, oh, I'm talking about God, I got to turn the other way. You know, we should be able to have an adult conversation about, you know, what does that belief look like? What does it mean to me? This is why I disagree and find some happy medium about it without it being so, oh, my God, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. And, you know, again, the calling is really for anybody that considers themselves Christian is, and I should say anybody that considers himself of any faith. You know, you're a representation of that faith. So we are representations of the God that we claim is real. We are representations of Jesus that we claim is our leader. So that's what our actions reflect. And I constantly am aware of that. I mean, when I make bad decisions, when I do something that I know wasn't the right thing to do, I'm infinitely aware of that because the second you make that claim, the second you put on that hat that, hey, I'm a follower of Christ, you're an ambassador of that. You're a, represent, you're a representation of that. And if that's the way you're representing yourself, what are you making your God, making Jesus look like? And kind of to Daryl's point, you know, unfortunately, I don't remember, I was 15 or 16, I had a buddy that twice got a girl pregnant we were the same age and the second time i had to be he was slightly older than me so he was 16 the second time he had to actually go out of state because it was too far in the term mm -hmm. you know they couldn't do it in illinois i want to say it was indiana or something and i was like well you know what do you want me to go for and he was like the people were crazy last time you know i just need some support and i was like dude this is the second time you've done this so you're on your own. The girl asked me to go. She's like, could you please go? I'm scared. I'm uncomfortable. I'd feel a lot better if you went. Now, again, I mean, where I lie in it is, you know, I believe in sanctity of all life. I don't want to see any life. I'm the person that catches spiders upstairs and throws them outside. I've been smacked upside the head for killing a spider in front of this man. I don't want to see any life lost. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I also don't, hold the responsibility of carrying that life out so in my personal opinion at the end of the day that's your option so whoever is making that decision that's up to them Agreed. until the day i can go up to you and say i will pay for it i will take care of it i will support it i can't make that decision and what i would tell anybody out there is it's very easy to cast judgment don't do 
you know, use protection, do this, do that, all these different things, you know, it happens. I know people who were using protection and it happened. You know, protection didn't work or, you know, whatever. Um, things happen in life and, and sometimes people just aren't, sometimes they're not monetarily prepared for it. Sometimes they're just too young, too scared. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into those decisions. And I'm all for if you're coming up and saying, please don't do this. That's a life that you're carrying. I will be responsible for that life. You know, it, it, that's a tough spot to sit there and tell somebody they can't do it. If you're not able to make those, uh, make the monetary, you know, promise that to somebody of taking care of that. So it's real easy to tell you, hey, you got to have that kid. You, you did it. It's God's, God's will, you know, so you have that for the next 50, 60 years, and you're responsible for that. And again, I'm not saying I don't disagree with that. And even, even still, if some, if that was the case where somebody's like, hey, well, don't don't go through with the procedure because I'll take care of it, we'll take care of it, this organization will take care of it, um, that baby still has to be carried for mm -hmm. a portion. So that the the nine months that the baby's carried, that's a lot of effects on uh, the the mother's uh, body that is not being accounted for. 100%. No doubt about it. Uh, during and after, you know, because it still, it still affects on the body after the baby's delivered. Absolutely. So, like, have the baby, and even, even if you put the baby up for adoption, there's other things that a lot of uh, groups and people aren't discussing that's to be, uh, to be examined and looked at and because nobody cares because it's not them that's doing it. Well, Every, and yeah, that's yeah. my whole point. Everybody that's that making the decisions... It's easy to come against it when it's not your money yeah. you're putting up. It's not, again, I hear a lot of talk about it. Everybody's super happy, um, you know, that it, it's it been ended. I don't ha haven't heard a single conversation about who's paying for these for the children, who's going to support that, where is that money coming from, how are you going to feed them, put a roof over their head, all of these different things that are real things that are going to happen. I haven't heard any of those discussions. And for this, when I went, I had the exact same experience as Daryl, you know, the signs right away, right away, screaming at her. And I'm talking closed quarters, yeah. like they're just bum yeah. rushing you. Yeah, they surrounded my car pretty much in front of it. And we were outside the car because, you know, we were walking to the, to the clinic and, you know, slamming the signs in her face of, like I said, different body parts, which it was all BS anyways. Um... And she got so broke down, she ran back to the car. You know, she was just completely overwhelmed. And so I kind of stayed out the car. By this time, police had came, calmed down a little bit. And, you know, are you sure you want to go back in? Yes, I have to. Are you sure? Yes. On the way back in, there was a young lady that approached her. And I was like, get away. Enough's enough. You know, leave the poor girl alone. She's going through enough. And she said, no, 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 please, if I could just, a second of your time, she handed her a pamphlet. And it was kind to what we were just talking about. You know, we have a very good option for you. We can support, we can give you monetary, all these different things, help you through it, and then, you know, provide adoption services for you. And I said, you know what, out of all these people, you're the only one that's legit. The only one that's got a real answer for it, that's given her a real option. And I do wholeheartedly believe if that law was to stay intact and it stayed constitutional, that there definitely needs to be a better educational system of it, of what exactly are you aborting? What exactly does it look like? What exactly are your options versus, and I haven't been through the process, maybe it is more entailed than it seems. But the point being, that's the Christian way. The, the lady on the very last ditch, these are some options for you. Can I please discuss them with you? You know, she wasn't berating her. She wasn't judging her. She was very kind, very warm, very sweet about it. You know, that's what Christianity is about. It's, it's coming from a place of love, empathy, kindness, understanding. Now, that girl was just as principled as the one slamming the signs in her face. But she was also the one that understood that you're not going to affect anything that way. And let's say, and I'm sure they have. I mean, she almost left. 
-hmm. You know, you scare them so much or you guilt ridden them so much. You know, it's not going to change them from coming back the next day, a week later, or, you know, whatever that may be. But that's where we as Christians need to be is that next level of that leadership of, and that's what we'll be talking about in the next podcast, you know, as Alex said, being a lion among the sheep. And what I'm fearful of is how often is that represented? You know, if that poor guy in Guardians of the Galaxy just makes a very simple comment of where his heart's at and gets, you know, buried over it, why is that so taboo? Why do we have such a hard time talking about this without becoming, you know, a social pariah over it? You know, again, not telling you you have to believe in God, not telling you you have to be a Christian, not telling you you have to be a follower of Christ, not telling you you have to be a Buddhist, Muslim, uh, practice Judaism. You know, all our whole point of all of this has always been for us. That's what's got us through the stuff that we've been through. That's become our baseline. That's become our faith. You know, and that's become now our belief. Right. And because it's worked for us, part of that is giving that back. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why it's important to us. You know, we made it through this and this because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not rubbing it in anybody's face. Never sat there and I don't believe in God, you heathen. You know, you're going to hell. Well, that that type of person, the same type of person that had the the people, not because it was not more than one person. So, but that that type of person that has a comment about what somebody says in an open statement that wasn't malicious at all, but then they take it and make it malicious. It's the same person that is, you know, eating frozen pizza on his on his recliner talking about what Tom Brady should have did in a game, mm-hmm. you know? So the person that's saying, you know, I feel like Chris, uh, Chris Pratt should have said this or he shouldn't have said that is either just finished doing some BS that is not in line with whatever they're talking about or are about to do it after they're done. So mm-hmm. it's that same armchair quarterback type of mentality. You know, uh, I believe, you know, everybody, if you have a slip up and somebody you get pregnant or you get somebody pregnant, you can... Uh, you just got to deal with it. And then, you know, next couple of days, they're actually going to, you know, do exactly what they just spoke of or they have in their past. And that's, it's a super hypocrite. And I, that's like one of my top things that I hate as a hypocrite is that somebody who says and does something or preaches something and does the complete opposite or have done the complete opposite. And it goes against like being a good person. Yeah. You know, I can't, in good faith and in honesty tell anybody to do or not do something that I took advantage of when I, you know, now I can say I don't recommend it Mm -hmm. because I did that and this was my experience, you know, but I can't be like, no, you can't do that. Right. You know, because I did it. It worked for me. Yeah. But no, you can't do that. Right. You know, we talked about that at work and I was just, I don't understand that mentality on how you can do something, take advantage of whatever it is, tax cuts, um, uh, abortions. I've never had an abortion with uh, anybody, a, a girl that I was with. Closest thing I had to that was a morning after pill. And um, that was, you know, up to her. Mm-hmm. If she would have been like, yeah, I'm not taking that, I'd have been like, well, okay, let's see if this is refundable because I'd like that money back. <laughs> <laughs> and that would have been the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, Absolutely. And I don't know. It's just... Because who am I to say, you know, you have to take this, whatever, I can't. Who am I to say you have to get an abortion or you you can't get an abortion? It doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm still going to go to the gym and work out and ride my bike and do all the stuff I want to do with my body. And I'm telling you what you can or cannot do with yours as an adult. This doesn't make sense to me. But I do want people to, like, think it, about what you say. Because if you say something and you know it's against what you've already done, I don't understand how you can do it. How, like, how can you justify being a hypocrite? I don't. It's foreign to me. Self righteous. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it all comes yeah, down yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. You learned your lesson. You went through it. Might have been a horrible experience. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times, self righteousness comes from a sincere spot. Like I said, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. So you're you're so passionate about don't make the mistake I made that you want to take away that option 
because, ah, look at I did it and I screwed up. But to your point, the key with that is I did do it. This is what I learned from it. This is why I feel like it's a mistake. You know, share your story by all means. You know, again, well, we know this far into civilization that taking away options doesn't stop anything. It all comes down to educating, discussing, you know, our podcasts are 55 minutes, an hour. You know, again, we see statistics. You know, people are tuned out after 15 minutes, yet we're still here 55 minutes, 58 minutes in. Yeah. Because if you really spend the time in this and listen to it all the way through, it's basically how you work through a problem. Right. You kind of start with, hey, this is the problem. Today, mm-hmm. this discussion was about why is talking about God so taboo? And we're kind of working through that. That's why it takes 55 minutes, an hour, right. an hour and five minutes. It's not a simple solution thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, but we're so addicted to that quick fix and kind of to Daryl's point, you know, let's make it illegal, make people, people are going to be more responsible because it's not an option anymore. So people are going to make better decisions and they're not. We've no. been there and done that before. Mm-hmm. It's like gun control. They're not. <laughs> no. Same type of thing. And even something like gun control, you know, what what I find amusing about this is the very people that are advocating, it's not amusing, it's sad. The very people that are advocating making that illegal are the very people that are also going to advocate that I want an AR that can hold 150 bullets, that children are dying. They're getting shot in the face. These kids were shot in the face. Mm. And so... Screw that kid because you want to play G.I. Joe, but yet the other is just as horrible. And that's kind of, again, not judging anybody who makes those decisions. My point is at some point you got to stop and really evaluate that. Yeah. That if you stand for life, then you got to stand for life. Mm. You know, if you, if we've talked about, I don't know, we grazed Black Lives Matter in the back. You know, in the past, if, if you're going to stand for something, you got to stand for it. Well, that's the whole thing. If you're going to believe in it. Yeah. You got to believe in mm-hmm. it. So if you're going to tell me Black Lives Matter, I'm with you. All the power to you. I'll stand with you. Let's go to Inglewood. Mm-hmm. Let's go on to some south side. Let's go to the west side. Let's start standing in front of those neighborhoods and saying we're not accepting this anymore. Can't be just every time a kid gets shot by a white cop that Black Lives Matter because they're dying every day in the streets. Yep. Yeah, and that's that that's that real um surface level stuff. And that that goes back to what you started with. We as a society like surface level, easy to digest um uh, information and actions. So that's why our, our news has changed the way we get news. Now we just get these little blips on our phone or mm-hmm. our, our laptops or whatever, all the devices that we have. Even the way that news is delivered on TV is different. Like, it's shorter now. It's very quick, you know. And they like to give all the answers as the story is developing. Right. You know. And we don't have time or patience to to get the whole story because to get the whole story or to do whatever the complete action is to support whatever change we're trying to support right because everybody's too busy right you mm-hmm. know they all tune out after two minutes yeah yep. yeah <laughs> they get all it circles all right back in mm-hmm. let's oh you know what I, I like these guys let me see what they're talking about yeah we're talking to like four people right yeah. now by the way yeah <laughs> let's talk to them yeah power to and those four people like, oh, thank you for hanging in there yep. mom yeah they've yeah, they <laughs> checked out this is all family members <laughs> Yeah. Friends, thank you guys for still listening. Because everybody else had like TV shows to watch, you know. But and I, you know, I'm not. That doesn't make me mad. But we do have an attention span uh, issue in society now, and it goes across the board. If you support anything, Black Lives Matter. If you support our show, if you you just want to be able to say I support that, mm-hmm. the, uh, the vote you know, between one to four minutes to it and then move on to the next thing that you want to watch, support, or interact with. And um, I think we got to slow it down. And if you support something, do, you know, do the work, mm-hmm. do the hard work, and make that support real, you know. Definitely. Yeah, you tell somebody, hey, I'm there for you no matter what happens. When they're at their worst, show up. Yeah. Yep. That's hard for people to do that. Don't they just won't. send a text saying, hey, hope you feel better or hope that things get better. Show up. Yeah. And what what is that? Like hope I hope you feel better. It's like yeah, man, damn, I hope he feels better. 
Yeah. Shit, what you want to do? What you about to do? Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's not admirable to show up, just so everybody knows. You know, yeah. if, if you show up, that's not like, that doesn't make you a better person. Right. Yeah. You get a pat on the back. Yeah. Show up because you could. Like, if I tell you, if the words come out of my mouth, hey, bro, I got you. Anything you need, I'm there. Yeah. I'm going to be there. When you need me, I'm going to show up. I'm going to help you. I'm physically going to be there. Yep. And I don't want praise for it. That's mm-hmm. what you should do. If you're a friend of mine, that's what I expect. Yep. You know, if one day I'm laying in a hospital bed, you guys, well, I hear it all the time. Hey, bro, I got you. That You should. I'll see you there. Well, and that's kind of the whole point that if you're claiming to be a Christian, you're claiming to be of some kind of faith, you, you got to be that you got to be that rock. I mean, mm-hmm. you got to be that Peter. You can't just like we were just talking about Black Lives Matter. Man, I it makes me as sick seeing the videos as anybody else. And like I said, you want to march right down Inglewood right now, be the first in line. I've done it. But to sit there and get in a perfectly, you know, a, an officer that you've never met in your life, telling him how big of a piece of shit he is, and you ain't worth shit, and you beat people up. Never met this man in your life. I know nothing about him. Mm-hmm. Might be going home to his family. Take, and what are you hoping to advocate from that? So now that officer is supposed to say, oh, wow, I really empathize with you. I see, mm-hmm. All you did is just rile him up and piss him off. So now mm-hmm. somebody that was probably on your side before that is now against you. And we're consistently doing this. Both sides, both sides are consistently doing this to one another. You, We see it with abortion right now. We see it with, I mean, the Roe versus Wade. We saw it with Black Lives Matter. We saw it with this freaking insurrection that, oh, well, this was an injustice. My guy really won. This is bogus. We had it. We're patriots. You're no freaking patriot. You are no patriot. There has no been proven to this day. I have yet to see an ounce of proof. There's nothing patriotic about turning against your country because your freaking guy lost, you sore loser. That's the exact get, get opposite it. of patriotic. Complete opposite. Here's, here's a man that's patriotic, willing to live and die for his country. That's And same thing. These are the same people that you shouldn't be kneeling during you know, the... Star Spangled Banner that's uh, disrespectful to our soldiers. Well, running over Congress and storming the Capitol is disrespectful to our soldiers. You can't be on both sides of that. And I'm against both, by the way. So I'm against seeing anybody get beat up, black, Mm -hmm. white. I don't care what they are, brown, Asian. I don't want officers beating up anybody. I also believe that the vast majority of our officers aren't like that. No, we know a lot of cops that aren't like Ton. that. We yeah. daily, wonderful people. The family members that are Chicago. Family members are great yeah. people. Yeah, well, so I don't just believe that. Years. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, Daryl, you you served, right? That's what being a patriot is. I mean, you went over there and gave, not only did you serve, but correct me if I'm wrong, you decided to take it one step further and got into a unit knowing that you're going to run into people that are combative, knowing that your time overseas is going to be getting shot at. Not all the time, but probably some of the time. And those people that are kneeling, you probably have a problem with. Did you have a problem with people that are storming the Capitol as a patriot? Did that bother you as much as kneeling did? So I was pretty open to the first. um, So I never really can call myself a uh, a patriot. Like I- It's because you're humble. well, because you're really a patriot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I was, My, anybody who told me how tough they are, are usually the biggest wusses. Well, the I'm, reason why you're a patriot is you, you don't consider yourself, yourself a patriot. A patriot. Maybe, maybe that's something I never thought about. Because uh, I look at it like I, I, I joined, and I did. I went, I joined right, right out of Chicago here. And when I went, I already knew what I wanted to do. And um, I had to take an ASVAB and... and um, to see if I can, you know, what scores I would get to enter and get the job I needed or wanted. And uh, when I did, I scored well. I was always been, you know, uh, quick-witted or smart. But um, they tried to push me into a lot of other jobs, and I told them I wanted to be infantry or airborne or I wanted a ranger or SF contract. And the whole recruiting station tried to get me to change my course because— why would I go to a, a combat job when I qualify for other stuff? But that's just what I wanted to do. And a lot of that is just Americana. I grew up watching Arnold and uh, and Stallone and Commando mm-hmm. and Rambo and stuff like that. 
And um, I just felt like that's what I, you know, that's what appealed to me when I was young. So if I was going to go into the military, that's the type of job that I was going to have. Um, I didn't see it any other way. Um, now, I look at some people who had other jobs and they had a, a way different experience than mine. And teach his own. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't trade it though, and, you know, uh, even looking back. But with the, I'm, like he said, I was a little different with the, with both things. Um, so kneeling doesn't bother me if I know why you're kneeling. Sure. Now, if you're just doing it, because I don't feel like it's not offensive to me. Because we wear, like, we wear a flag everywhere on every piece of our uniform. I've seen the flag ho uh, hoisted and have, you know, shed, shed a tear before. I've also handed folded flags. I did, right before I got out, I did 30 funerals where I, um, I handed the flag to 30 different family members of a, lost one, a loved one that they lost. The whole funeral uh, procedures I was the NCO I see of. And um, for most of them, I did about 20 of them where I actually handed the flag. 20 something. I think it was only two because if the person who passed outranked me, the person that passes the flag after it's folded to that loved one is of equal or greater rank. Mm -hmm. So if they were equal to me or, or, or less than my rank, which I was a staff sergeant, then I would present the flag to the family member. If it was a higher, I did one for a major. So we had another major show up. So mm -hmm. I still led the, uh, the uh, funeral uh, procedures. But then after we folded it and I inspected, I handed it to the major and the major handed it to the uh, loved one. And um, so I do have like appreciation for the flag and stuff like that. But when you look at reasons why people either kneeled f for the flag at a sporting event, it didn't bother me because one is a sporting event. You know, right. it's, mm -hmm. it's like in, we've been brainwashed. We don't need to have uh, they use that for recruiting. And it's not done out of of just sheer. Um, we're running over a little bit. I'll make it quick. So it's not it's not done out of like sheer um, patriotism. The NFL doesn't hoist a flag and have jets fly over and play the national anthem at every game or the NBA or the MLB just because they fucking love America. They actually get paid by a defense contract to do that because it promotes recruitment. <laughs> So, and this is researchable. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so my everybody's, like, would drop it. everybody's like, oh my God, every game, you know, you know, they play the Star Spangled Banner. It's because they're getting fucking paid to do so. All right. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can research it. And then when the Jets fly over at the Super Bowl, look at the commercials that come on on those games. There are recruitment commercials for whatever branch. Mm. All right. They had the defense has a budget that they promote all those events. So, because look how many people you're hitting. You're getting all the people in the stadium, all the people at the field, all the people watching nationally. So, why wouldn't you use it as a recruitment tool? Right. You know? Um, and so, it it's, it's doesn't bother me because I'm like, oh, the fucking army pay for that. Mm -hmm. You know? The Navy pay for that. Who, you know, who cares? And um, so, it, does, it, it doesn't bother me. The other thing was kneeling and what else was it? At, uh, Storming the, the Capitol. Insurrection. The insurrection. No, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to use yeah. that word. Yeah, no, Storm the Capitol. <laughs> insurrection. <laughs> the insurrection. So, the thing about that, and they say, like, all oh, those guys were patriots. George Washington is not considered a patriot in Great Britain. He's considered a patriot here because he revolted against the king in Great Britain, and then we started a new country here. So, he is a patriot here. And in the UK, George Washington is a fucking traitor. <laughs> An insurrectionist and a traitor, because he went against the oath, the oath that he that he said to be a general of those armies and to support the king. And then when he got over here, he was like, "Fuck that." So they're not patriots, like you said. Mm -hmm. They're insurrectionists. And if we started, if a new country was started, then maybe they would have been a patriot, but they it didn't, and they, they aren't. So, so I kind of set you up, and I, I won't make this long because I know your person and your character, and ask that question very pointed because Daryl just proved not only his humbleness, great guy, was willing to give his life for his country, humble, just gave me a look for it, and on top of it, a patriot and a Christian because a guy who was willing to go and die for his country – and to see things that enrage so many people. And I know there's veterans out there that were pissed about it. But what it shows Daryl is the first thing he said is, well, it depends why they're kneeling. 
So a guy who is willing to go and die for his country is willing to take a look at what is that person going through that makes them feel like they have to kneel in a situation where we just found out the Army's paying for the Star Spangled Banner Mm -hmm. is because Daryl's a Christian. He's willing to take that step back. He's an empathetic human being that even though was very probably very good at what he did, which was a very violent job, is empathetic enough to look at a human being and recognize that there might be a reason that they're doing that. And even on the flip side of the coin, is able to look at something like that and give you a completely different perspective. So, I didn't mean to set you up, bro, but trust no, you good. as <laughs> character, trust you as a human being that, you know, those true colors were going to show. Yeah, who's Brad? I think that covers. I can't follow that. <laughs> you know? I mean, my big thing at the end of the day with, with all of this discussion is, you know, be real. Mm-hmm. Be honest. Be, you know, it's easy to storm the Capitol when it's a bunch of you against, you know, much smaller forces that you know at the end of the day really aren't going to do shit. So when that girl got popped, they dispersed very quickly. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, had it gone down that way, none of that would have happened. Right. But they didn't make that decision. Same thing with the, if you're on the front of the line of Black Lives Matter telling any officer how big of an ass he is and how big of a piece of shit he is and all this crap because you're right in the middle of a video camera and you know damn well nobody's doing anything. The reason why your ass isn't in Inglewood because you'll get your head cracked open. Mm-hmm. Get in their faces and pull that shit with no yeah. cameras. You might not be going home. Yeah, because those guys.